Did you know that in the last century, engineers have moved more earth and rock than all the natural rivers in the world combined? We are no longer just living on the land nature gave us. We are actively reshaping the crust of our planet to build new territory in the middle of the ocean. These projects are not just piles of dirt. They are massive machines designed to fight ocean currents, support skyscrapers, and even control the local weather. We are talking about islands that use satellite guidance to place every grain of sand and foundations that have to survive centuries of salt corrosion. But how do you stop a billion tons of sand from simply washing away? And which of these engineering marvels is actually sinking right now? These are the most impressive artificial islands on Earth. We begin with the most famous shape in ocean engineering. The Palm Jumeirah in Dubai is a massive artificial landmass that added nearly 80 kilometers of coastline to the city. Construction started in 2001, but engineers faced a huge problem immediately. They could not use steel or concrete for the base because the salt water would destroy it. Instead, they had to use 94 million cubic meters of sand and 7 million tons of rock. That is enough rock and sand to build a two-meter high wall that circles the globe three times. The most critical part of the design is the Crescent Breakwater. This 11-kilometer long barrier protects the inner island from the powerful waves of the Persian Gulf. To build it, divers first laid down a geotextile membrane on the seabed. This fabric is crucial because it stops the sand from washing away from under the rocks. Without it, the heavy stones would just sink into the soft sea floor. On top of this fabric, they placed a core of rubble, followed by massive armor rocks weighing up to six tons each. The sand for the island itself was not dumped randomly. Dredging ships used a process called rainbowing, spraying sand in a high arc to place it exactly where needed. To ensure the palm tree shape was perfect, the dredgers were guided by a differential global positioning system that was accurate to within one centimeter. But loose sand is dangerous. It can turn into a liquid during an earthquake. To prevent this, builders used vibrocompaction. They drilled over 2,000 holes into the ground with giant vibrating probes. These probes shook the sand grains until they packed together tightly, creating a solid foundation capable of supporting hotels and roads without sinking. While the palm was built for low-density villas, our next project had to solve a different problem. How do you handle the extreme utility needs of a dense city built on water? The Pearl Qatar in Doha covers 4 million square meters and cost around $15 billion to build. The engineering marvel here is hidden underground. In a hot desert climate, air conditioning uses the most energy. Installing thousands of separate AC units would be inefficient. Instead, engineers built the world's largest integrated district cooling plant. This massive machine has a capacity of 130,000 tons of refrigeration. It uses huge centrifugal chillers to cool water to near-freezing temperatures. This icy water travels through an insulated underground pipe network to cool every tower and apartment on the island. This system saves huge amounts of electricity compared to standard cooling. The second major challenge was sewage. On a natural island, you dig deep holes for pipes so gravity can pull the waste down. But on reclaimed land with a high water table, deep holes fill with seawater. To solve this, engineers installed a vacuum sewerage system. This system uses air pressure instead of gravity. When waste collects in a chamber, a valve opens and the vacuum pressure sucks the waste through the pipes at high velocity. This allows the pipes to be smaller and laid in shallow trenches, ensuring no sewage leaks out to contaminate the surrounding area. Off the coast of Long Beach, California, you will see four tropical islands with waterfalls, palm trees, and tall white towers. They look like exclusive resorts, but they are actually major industrial work sites. These are the Thumbs Islands, built in 1965 to tap into the Wilmington oil field. The name comes from the five oil companies, Texaco, Humble, Union, Mobil, and Shell that funded the project. 
The city did not want ugly oil rigs ruining the view, so they forced engineers to camouflage the entire operation. The islands were built using 640,000 tons of boulders barged in from a perimeter ring. The center was then filled with over 3 million cubic yards of sand dredged from the harbor. The towers you see are not apartments. They are movable soundproof shells that slide on rails to cover the drilling rigs. They are designed to trap the loud noise of the heavy machinery so people on the beach cannot hear it. The waterfalls are also functional engineering because the sound of the water falling creates a white noise frequency that masks the low hum of the drills. The drilling technology here is just as impressive. The islands are small, only about 10 to 12 acres each, but the oil field is huge. To reach it, engineers use extended reach directional drilling. The drill bits can steer underground to tap into oil reservoirs thousands of meters away horizontally. They have drilled over 1,100 wells from these tiny footprints. To stop the city of Long Beach from sinking as they pump the oil out, they inject massive amounts of water back into the ground to keep the pressure stable. Sometimes, an island is not a destination, but a bridge between two worlds. In the strait between Denmark and Sweden, engineers needed to build a link connecting the two countries. However, a high bridge the whole way would block airplanes landing at Copenhagen Airport. A tunnel the whole way was too expensive. The solution was to build both and connect them in the middle of the sea. This required building a brand new island called Peberholm. Peberholm is four kilometers long and was constructed entirely from the material dug out of the seabeds to make the trench for the tunnel. Engineers used six million cubic meters of dredged limestone and clay to build the island, saving the cost of disposing of it elsewhere. The island is protected by 1.6 million tons of rock revetments to stop the strong currents from washing it away. The island serves a vital technical function. It allows the traffic from the high bridge, where cars and trains run on two different levels, to switch to the tunnel, where they run side by side. But the most fascinating part is the biological engineering, or lack of it. Engineers decided not to plant a single seed. They left the sterile rock and clay alone to see what would happen. It became a massive experiment. Nature colonized the island rapidly. Today, over 450 plant species and rare spiders live there. It is strictly protected and only biologists are allowed to visit once a year. Not all rock islands are success stories. Located on the west coast of France, Fort Boyard is a stone fortress rising straight out of the waves. Napoleon ordered its construction in the early 1800s to protect the coast from the British Navy. The plan was to build a stone base on a sandbank called the Long de Boyard, but the engineering technology of the time was not ready for the challenge. Workers dumped 75,000 cubic meters of rock onto the sandbank to create a foundation, but the rocks were too heavy for the loose sand and simply sank. Winter storms were even worse, scattering the rocks and destroying months of work in a single night. The project was abandoned in 1809 because the foundation would just not stabilize. Work only resumed 30 years later when they could use larger blocks and allow time for the seabed to settle. Ironically, by the time the fort was finished in 1857, it was useless. Cannon technology had improved so much that guns on the mainland could already cover the area the fort was meant to defend. Today, the fort is facing a new engineering battle. The ocean is destroying it. A massive restoration project costing 36 million euros is set to begin in 2025. Engineers will install a new concrete spur and a harbor to break the waves before they hit the historic walls. Unlike the original rock dumping, these new defenses will be prefabricated concrete caissons. From a historic fort to a modern environmental crisis, our next island serves a much dirtier purpose. In the Maldives, land is scarce. In 1992, the government created Filafushi, an artificial island built entirely as a landfill. For decades, it was a disaster. Between 300 and 500 tons of mixed trash were dumped there every day, often into unlined pits dug into the coral reef. The island grew by one square meter a day, 
just from the volume of rubbish, leaching toxic chemicals into the ocean. However, a major engineering overhaul is changing everything. The government is currently constructing a state-of-the-art waste-to-energy facility on the island. This plant is designed to process 500 tons of waste per day. Instead of dumping the trash, it will be incinerated in a controlled environment to generate heat. This heat will drive turbines to produce 13 megawatts of electricity. 10 megawatts will be fed into the local grid to power homes, while the rest will run the plant. The facility includes advanced flue gas treatment systems to filter out the toxic smoke before it is released. This turns a pollution nightmare into a source of renewable energy. The project also involves reclaiming 150 hectares of new land using proper containment methods to stop leachate from escaping, effectively sealing off the old pollution. Finally, we return to Dubai for a project that is trying to control the weather itself. Just off the coast lies The World, a collection of 300 islands shaped like a world map. Construction stopped in 2008, and for years, the islands sat eroding in the waves. Without maintenance, the sand began to wash away, and satellite images showed the islands merging together. But one section, the heart of Europe, is pushing engineering to the limit to make the islands habitable. The developers are building a raining street. This one kilometer long street is designed to stay at a comfortable 27 degrees Celsius year round, even when the desert heat hits 50 degrees. To do this, they installed concealed pipes in the rooftops that spray cold water down onto the street. The engineering relies on thermodynamics. As the water falls and hits the pavement, it evaporates, absorbing heat from the air and cooling the environment. They have also built floating seahorse villas. These are three-level marine structures anchored to the seabed. The bottom floor is fully submerged, featuring bedrooms with floor-to-ceiling windows made of thick aquarium-grade acrylic. To ensure the view is good, they are cultivating artificial coral reefs and attaching them to the structure. This requires special marine concrete that can withstand saltwater corrosion for 100 years without cracking. It is an audacious attempt to force a European climate and marine lifestyle into the middle of the Persian Gulf. Which of these engineering feats impressed you the most? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this deep dive into extreme construction, hit that like button and subscribe for more amazing engineering stories. Thanks for watching.